Within some of my previous videos on BSPWM and the Simplex Hotkey Daemon, I've talked about using generic tools to control your windows where available. So today I'm going to be talking about one of those tools by the name of XDO. So if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help be really appreciated. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So this is the GitHub page here for XDO. So if you notice the developer is Baskerville. So this is the same person who made BSPWM and the Simplex Hockey Daemon. And this was made expressly for the purpose of doing things like actually working with Windows but not being tied to BSPC. So it's perfectly fine to use BSPC if you want to, but there's a couple of times where say you want to jump to DWM or you want to jump to i3. You might want to keep those same configs within the Simplex Hockey Daemon and using generic tools like this will let you do that. So Baskerville describes this as a small X utility to perform elementary actions on Windows. So we'll go through what it can actually do because it's generally fairly cool. So bring up the man page for XDO. Actually first, before we do that, if you want to install it, so it on Arch, you can get it from the standard repo, so sudo pacman-s xdo. For some reason, I had the AUR version installed previously, but it is available in the standard repo, so you can install it like that. Okay, so most of the stuff in here is very, very, very simple. So I'll go through it all pretty much. Close does exactly what you would expect it to do. So if we run xdo close in this window right here, xdo close, that'll just kill that window. Now, as for XDO kill, I'm not entirely sure what it does. It's not entirely clear. What I assume that it's going to do, I know that it closes the window. So if I go XDO kill on this, it kills the window. What I assume it does is it passes in signal 9. So if you use that on a window that's unresponsive, then it will be able to kill that and just say, you have to quit, you have no choice about this. So next up is hide. So XDO hide. So what this will do is it will hide this window, which doesn't kill it. So if I... I'll just show you. If we run ls in here, just so I can show you what it looks like when we bring it back up. And then we run xdo hide. So that hides that window, but it's still available. So if I bring up another terminal, and I'll show you what this does a bit later, but xdo show dash dr, then that window is still there. We've also got my discord window, and this is one of the problems that xdo has that I will talk about a bit later in the video. It doesn't handle showing and hiding certain types of windows, but we'll get to that in a bit. But as we can see, this terminal I had before is now shown. Obviously, because of BSPWM, it had to create a new space for the Discord window, so this is cut off. But if it was created at the same size again, you would see everything that you would normally see. So XDO show does exactly what you would expect it to do. It shows a window, so obviously I can't hide a window and then show you without doing some extra stuff, but basically what it does is it's tells a window, don't hide anymore, actually show yourself. Now, raise and lower is another one where I can't really show too well. So, with a lot of window managers, you can actually stack windows on top of each other. For example, with my polybar here. So, normally what would happen with the polybar is that if I didn't do some extra settings within polybar, it would show itself above windows. But you can use this to say, no, I actually want you to be behind this window. Or, no, I actually want you to be above this window. So raise and lower will let you do that. Same with below and above. Now, move window does exactly what you expect it to do. But I can't show you it with tiling windows because the window manager has complete control over where the windows are actually placed. So what we have to do is make this a floating window. So if I make that a floating window and we go xdo move, that won't do anything. It will run, but it won't do anything. So what we need to do is also look at some of the options we can pass into xdo. So if we look down for the dash x and the dash y options, so these will let you specify the amount to move by. So if we go plus or dash x plus 50 and dash y plus, I don't know, let's just go 50. That will then move plus 50 on the x-axis plus 50 on the y-axis. And there we go. That's not as big of a difference as it could have been. Let's say plus, I don't know, 500. There we go. Now it's moved off the screen. I'll just kill that and we'll bring up another one. That was probably a bad spot to move it to. But doing this, you can also move it to an exact coordinate. So let's say we want to move to x10, y10. 
that will move it to 1010. So you can either specify exact coordinates or an amount to move by. Typically I will do an amount to move by because I want to move my windows around. But you might have some other use for it that isn't just those. Resize also does what you'd expect resize to do. Once again, it doesn't work perfectly with tiling windows because the window manager has some control over the window sizes. So it's easier to test that with a floating window. Also, it doesn't behave the same way that BSPC does with resizing windows. So I don't like this method myself. I like to be able to expand outward and expand inward. This only lets you expand outward, I believe. So it's not as neat. So if we go, XDO resize, but obviously that's going to be entirely up to you. So now we also need to look at some other options. So we need the dash W and the dash H option. So once again with this, you can do an absolute value you want to set it to. So let's say you want to set it to 100 by 100. That'll set it to that size, which is very, very small. So we can't really see much. Let's say we just set it to 1000 now so we can just... Oh, okay. Now I'm, I'm just going to close that window actually. I made that a bit too, and now I'm on the wrong screen. XDO close. There we go. Okay, we'll bring that one back open again. So as I said, you can make it an absolute size or you can change it by a certain amount. I typically change by a certain amount, but obviously that's gonna depend on your actual use case. So XDO-W say plus 20 minus 50, I guess. There we go, that also changes the size. So. Next up, we have activate. I can't, I'm not entirely sure what activate means. I think that means focus. Different programs refer to focus as different things, but I think that activate means focus. So the next couple of ones are fairly simple, and then we get some really cool stuff that I don't use, but I could see it being incredibly useful. So if we go XDO ID, that will get the window ID. I think that's assigned by the window manager or it's used by the window manager to at least know which windows are which. But typically what you're going to want to know is what the PID of it is. That's the process ID. So if we run that, that'll get us the process ID of that. So if I go PID of ST, then one of those, yeah, there we go. That ID is one of those that is available. So we also have key press, key release, button press, button release, and pointer motion. So you can actually use XDO to send fake key presses and fake button presses and fake pointer motion to an application. I don't use this for anything, but I imagine you could do some really, really cool stuff with this, especially with automation. I know there's a lot of people who like to use Python to automate a lot of tasks. And personally, I don't do it myself. I typically use shell script, but if you want to like interact with this application, you could probably do the same thing with shell script and send fake key presses. Like I, I don't even know what you want to do really. Like you could do, cause a lot of the stuff you could do in Vim, you can already do with Vim just by itself. You don't need some external application, but I'm sure someone has some use for it. So if you do want to send any of these, there is an example down the bottom of how this actually works. So if I close that one, okay. So if we go XDO key press and then dash K, the dash K option will let you send a key code for any of those options. Then this is sending key code 46. Then it's sleeping for 0.2 of a second. Then it's doing key release on the same key. So what that will do is it'll press L, it'll wait 0.2 seconds, and then it will release L. So if I just write that first part, I'll show you what I mean. So if we go XDO key press, key underscore press, dash K, 46. So if we just do that first option, what this is going to do is just keep sending a fake L key press to my terminal. There we go. So that'll just loop on forever until I do something to kill it. But what this is doing is pressing the L key and then basically letting it go after 0.2 seconds, which is probably much better. And you can probably actually get some useful stuff done with that, unlike what I'm doing here. So that's pretty much everything for that stuff, but there's a couple of extra stuff that you might be interested in. So if you saw before when I did XDO show dash DR, so what that does, this is an example from down here. So it's an opposite of what this one is. So this is XDO hide dash DR. So what this will do is it'll hide all of the windows on the current desktop, except for the focused window. So I typically use this for something like this. So I've got a bunch of terminals here. Let's say I want to full screen this one. 
So all of those windows are now hidden because of this command. So I focus on this window, I make it full screen and everything that's not focused is then hidden. And then I do the opposite when I go out of full screen. You can do the same thing within BSPC. But once again, let's say I wanna go to i3, I wanna go to Qtile, I wanna go to Awesome, I wanna go to DWM. If I do that, then I would have to completely rewrite that command and then put it in the syntax for those window managers. But if I'm just using XDO to do it, then I can just transfer this over and it'll interact directly with the windows and not really worry about the window manager. So there's some cool stuff that you can do in here. So let's have a look at a couple of them. So we've got distinct ID, same class, distinct class, same desktop, distinct desktop. So these ones you can actually do a lot of cool stuff with. So let's open up a new desktop and let's say we want to do something like XDO close on the same desktop of the same class. So that will kill all of these windows. There we go. Or we could do something like, let's say we bring our Firefox browser here. We do the same thing here. So that will kill everything except for the Firefox browser because this is a different class of window. So the class is basically the application type. And now we've just got this left. So I think you can probably work out what the other ones do then. Distinct ID, I don't even know what the point of that is. Every single window has a distinct ID. If someone knows why that option is even there, let me know, because I can't work it out. If I was to do distinct desktop, that would also kill this man page. So let's actually do that. So let's say we want to close everything that's on distinct desktop that's of the same class. So now we don't have this man page here anymore. So you can do a lot of really cool stuff with that. Obviously that's just scratching the surface with this. You can combine a lot of these options to do some really cool stuff and especially with this key press and key release stuff. I don't use this myself, but if you do, then I'm sure you can work out something really cool for it. The main stuff I use it for is moving. I was gonna use resizing, but I kind of prefer my method and also window closing, hiding and showing. All of that stuff is really, really useful within XDO. So we've also got stuff in here for the window has the given instance name. So you can actually define to kill a window with a certain name. You can kill a window with a certain class. So I believe the class name for Firefox is just Firefox. So if we go XDO close, then dash N Firefox. Yeah, that kills my Firefox window. So if you wanna kill certain types of windows from your terminal, let's say you just like using your terminal for everything you can actually use XDO to say, I wanna kill this window and it'll just kill it. You can also specify a WM name. So that's the window manager name. You can specify a window target with the dash T option. That'll let you do for the below and above action. So you need to give it the window ID, which is this ID. So ID, the hex value, not the PID. The PID though, you can use for some other stuff. So you can use this for say, you want to kill a certain window with a certain PID, which is very useful, especially for things like, I wanna kill my polybar, for example, and then I want to reload a polybar. Then I can use that for that. So we've gone through the dash K option, the dash X, dash Y, dash W and dash H. Then, okay, we've also got handle symbolic desktop numbers. I don't know what that means. I think that refers to the actual desktop numbers up here, but I'm not entirely sure. You might need to look into that one for yourself and then wait for the existence of a matching window. So that'll basically just tell the application, okay, run this command, but don't actually do anything until there's a window that matches the criteria. So let's have a look at some of these examples. So XDO close we went over, XDO close dash C, that'll close all of the windows with the same class. I showed you that with also using the dash D option, which will close all the windows of the same class on the same desktop. So we've got hide windows on the current desktop, except for the focus window. Activate a window with this ID. So I presume, as I mentioned before, that activate refers to focus. Now I did mention before about a slight issue with XDO, and I'll show you what that is. So if we bring up Discord again, Discord is a notable example of this, but I am assuming Slack does it as well and a couple of other applications that you close, but you don't actually quit out of. So what Discord does is it'll keep itself open forever and then only actually disappear 
once you quit out of it. So if I bring up a terminal, just watch, it's not gonna happen this time, I bet. So if we go xdo hide dash dr, that'll hide the window perfectly fine. But as we saw earlier in the video, it kind of created this sort of see-through window before when we showed it. Now, I tried this off camera and it didn't actually happen. Yeah, it's actually gonna work this time, but I've had it so, as you saw earlier, you can reshow the window, but it's not actually reshowing the content. But with BSPC, it reshows it every single time. So I don't know what the issue with that is. Maybe it's not correctly telling the window to reshow itself or something along those lines. But I don't like that it's not 100% consistent. I'd rather use the system that actually works all of the time rather than the one that doesn't always work. I don't know what the cause of this is. If someone knows what it is, let me know and I'll see if I can do anything about it, but I really doubt that I could. So I think that might be pretty much everything for XDO. Next time I do a video like this, it's going to be on XDO Tool, which is another application that people use to do a lot more stuff than this. XDO is only scratching the surface of what you can do with window management. XDO Tool is a much, much more comprehensive tool. I prefer this one because for just general simple stuff like closing, hiding, and showing windows, it has a much, much simpler interface and you can get everything you want done with it. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help will be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I have got my Discord. So if you want to chat with me, people are actually popping up in my Discord and talking now, which is awesome. So pop in there, send me a message, and hey, maybe we can chat. Also down below, I've got my library. So if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube, go check that out as well. And also down below is my Twitter and my Mastodon. So if you want to get video updates, that's the best place to get them. And lastly, my support links are also down below. So if you want to support the channel, go there. You can donate some LBC, Bitcoin, or Ethereum at this stage. If people want to donate other stuff, then let me know. I can easily set up another wallet. And also I've got my PayPal and my Patreon. Obviously all of my videos will remain available for free. So if you don't want to pay for them, don't feel like you have to. So I think that's pretty much everything for me and I'm out.